Hi, in this video, I will teach you how to handle errors in Python. Error handling is important in every program, and you need to know the tools how to handle errors robustly. Since you have used Python already for some time, I am sure you came across exceptions in Python when your program crashes. Python throws different kinds of exceptions if you perform an invalid operation. Let us look at this example. In this code, we define a function invert of x, which takes the input, converts it to a floating point value, and then returns its invert. This function works well for positive and negative integers. However, it breaks, for instance, if I pass in 0, since 1 over 0 is not defined. The result is that we get a zero division error, which is one of the standard exceptions in Python. Python also, also tells us exactly where the error is, has happened. In this case, it was in line four when we called the invert function. Python also shows us where in the invert function the error happened. In this case, it happened in line two in the return statement. At the end of the exception, we also get an additional message explaining why the error occurred. In this case, it is a float division by zero. We can try another input to get an exception of a different type. Let us try a string. Converting s to a floating point value should fail, so we should see an exception. In this case, we got a value error exception. The error message tells us that it could not convert the string s to a floating point value as expected. Exceptions can also occur if you perform file operations that are invalid. In this case, I try to open a file hello.txt that does not exist. When executing this command, we get a file not found error. The file not found error is yet another of the standard exceptions that come in Python. Another exception that occurs often is if you try to access an element in an array that is outside the range of the array. In this case, I have an array of 12 elements, but I'm trying to access the 13th element, which results in an index error. Finally, an exception that you have undoubtedly seen before are syntax errors. Syntax errors are considered exceptions just like any other errors. In this example, I forgot to put brackets around the print statement. When we execute this code, we get a syntax error with exactly the same structure as the errors before, with an error message that helps us understand how to fix the error. Let us now return to our invert function and try to implement a more robust way of handling invalid inputs. One classical way of catching errors is to use if statements to check if the input of a function is valid and only then call the function itself. In our case, we need to make sure that the variable x can be successfully converted to a floating point value and that its value is non-zero. The code for this could look like as follows. First, we have an if statement where we use the Python intrinsic function isNumeric that checks if a variable can be converted to a floating point value. If this is successful, we in addition check if the value of x is not equal to zero, in which case we call the invert function. In all other cases, we print relevant error messages like division by zero or that the input is not a valid number. We can now test our code. Now we can see if it works. Now we can see if it works. Let's try an input that is an invalid string, in this case, the character s. And indeed, we get an error message. Now if we try zero, we get the division by zero error. And if we try two, we get the expected value. However, this solution has multiple problems. If I try 2.0, I get an input is not a number error. The reason is that the isNumeric function checks that the string contains only numerical characters. And in our case, we have the dot, which is a non-numerical character. So the condition fails and we get an error. The second problem is if you pass in a floating point value, we get an attribute error telling us that the isNumeric function does not exist on floating point values. In order to fix that, we could add another if statement, checking if x is a floating point type and then calling invert x directly. A solution could look like this. I use the isInstance function to check the type of x. If it is a floating point value, we call invert of x directly. Otherwise, we perform our previous tests. As you might have guessed, there's a few problems with this approach. First, we need to cover all exceptional cases explicitly. Or already in this simple example, this becomes very extensive and complicated and it is and it's difficult to be sure that we indeed cover all the cases. So we're looking for a better solution for handling errors. In Python, the preferred way of handling errors is through exceptions. It is a very flexible way of handling errors. The fundamental underlying idea is we try to execute a statement and only if something goes wrong, then we handle it. Note that this is exactly the opposite 
to what we did in our previous example. With the if statements, we tried to only execute the code in the safe cases. With exceptions, we always try to execute the code and fix things if, when they break. The three keywords that you need to know for handling exceptions in Python is the try, accept, and the finally keywords. Python will first execute the statements in the try statement. If no exceptions are raised, all commands in the try statement will be executed. If an exception occurs, then the commands in the accept statements are being executed. In either of these cases, the commands in the finally block are always executed. Let us now consider again our invert example. And let's implement the try accept statement for this. Our solution looks like this. We wrapped the invert statement into the try block. If an exception occurs, we print an error message. Since we want to inform the user which type of error occurred, we get the exception object as a variable e and print it out as part of the error message. In addition, we instantiate the infx variable and set it to none, such that the remaining program will continue without crashing. Finally, we print the result. We can now check that this solution indeed works for all types of inputs. First, let's try a valid input. This works. Now let's divide by zero. This also worked. Now let's pass in an invalid string. Again, we get a sensible error message. In other words, we have now found an implementation that works for any type of error with relatively compact notation. One important property of exceptions in Python is that they're passed up the call stack when they're not handled in the function itself. This is relevant in, fun in, in nested function. That is, when fun one function calls another function. If the exception occurs, occurs in the lowest function, the exception is passed on to the next upper lying function. If it's not handled in that fun mother function either, it is handled to the next function. Finally, if it's not handled by the, by the main function, the pokem execution stops and the exception details is printed to the screen for the user. To demonstrate this, let's look at this simple example where I split our invert function into two functions, one that performs the string conversion and the second one that performs the inversion itself. The call stack here is that the invert string function calls the invert float function. If the exception occurs in the invert float function and is not handled in within the function, the exception is passed to the invert string function. If the exception is also not handled here, the exception is then passed to the main function. And if it's not handled here, it, the program will stop. As a programmer, we have the choice to handle the error in either of these places. It is completely up to you where and if you want to handle an exception. And it is sometimes not easy to decide where the best place to handle an exception is. In some cases, it might be important to test for specific exceptions and handle them differently. Python gives you more granular control over how to handle different errors by specifying the type of the exception that you want to catch. By stating the type of error after the accept statement, the following code block will only be executed if that specific type of exception is raised. In our example, I wanted to change the behavior of the program such that if we divide a number by zero, then the result should be infinity rather than an error message. I achieved that by catching the zero division error, and in that case, setting the infx variable to math.inf, which, which is a floating point representation of infinity. In all other cases, we handle the exceptions as before. The link below gives you an overview of all built-in exceptions that comes with Python. Of course, as developers, we not only want to catch and handle errors, but when we write functions, we might also want to raise our own exceptions. The easiest way of raising except exceptions in Python is for the assert statement. The assert keyword expects exactly one argument. If that argument is true, the code will continue. If the argument is false, an assertion statement will be raised. The assert keyword is useful for your internal development to make sure that certain conditions hold in your program. In our invert example, I add an assert statement to check that any variables that we pass into invert always are of type float. If I execute this code with a floating point number, it works as expected. But if I pass a string, the assert statement throws the assertion error. The second option that we have for raising exceptions is for the raise keyword. The raise keyword expects one input, namely the exception that we want to raise. This example raises an index error. 
All exception classes take a string as a first argument that is used to describe the details about the error. When executing this command, we see the same type of error message as before, including the custom message that we provided as string. We can also use the raise keyword to make our error messages more specific to the application. The trick is that we wrap the critical code into a try statement and add an accept statement for the error that we're interested in. If that exception occurs, we, we erase it again, but this time with the error message that we would like the user to see. This double invert function, for instance, fails if the user provides one or minus one. So I decided to create an error message to inform the user about these two different dangerous inputs. Now we can test if our function behaves as expected. With five as an input, the function executes normally. With one as an input, we get a zero division error with our custom error message. Finally, Python allows us to define our own exceptions if our error does not fit any of the default exceptions that Python comes with. An exception in Python is simply a class that is derived from the base exception class. We only need to define two functions. First, the init function that takes the custom error message as a string. It's a, it is typically a good idea to store that message as a class variable. That fun, the second function that should be implemented is the string function that is executed when the error is printed out. Here, a sensible implementation prints out some information about the error, including the user-specified error message. Once we have defined the class, we can use the error class division both to raise the error, but also in the accept statements.